Hello pilots and welcome back to Flight Academy Season 3. As always, my name is Phil and today we have the second semi-finals of this tournament. As always, the format rules are in the description below, but once again joining me for this we have... And my name is Fraser, it's great to be back Phil, thank you for having me. No worries, welcome back Fraser. Another semi-final to go through to find out who is aiming for the Season 3 prize. So before they start throwing dice at each other, let's run through those lists. Who do we have on the left-hand side? Amazing. So Gary is flying Elo Asti in the T-70 X-Wing for the Resistance. Uh, he has equipped him with Outmaneuver, the BB Astromech, the Ferrosphere Paint, the Shield Upgrade, Iron Missiles, and of course he's got the S4 card as well. Absolutely, and an early trigger of the BB Astromech there, which is quite interesting. And going up against him, Ooh. it's a sequel matchup indeed. We have Midnight in the Thai FO, flown by Ben with Duke, Pattern Analyzer, and Shield Upgrade. So the lightest arm ship of the semis. But that, that was. That target lock going down is is important and very, very powerful. Uh, but that is a nice evade there from Gary. That target lock, I have nightmares about that after the group stages. It's an absolute pain not being able to modify your dice when it's locked. Oh, it's painful, yeah. As Gary is just finding out there. But he does manage to sneak off one of those shields early on. Lovely stuff. So, I mean, this is an interesting matchup. I mean, it's a great matchup because it's sequel, but. Yes. You don't normally see one TIE Fighter versus an X-Wing. You normally see multiple TIE Fighters versus an X-Wing. That is true. Which it's... makes me think we're already at a bit of a disadvantage here. However, it's a very clear case of um, the opposite to the previous semi-final. We've got uh, bulky, slightly more hard-hitting chip versus dodgy ace ship and that's sort of how you've got to do it which yeah. makes me think this bump is not so good for Ben I don't think this bump is actually beneficial for either player but it's also not terrible well a hit crit is pretty good until Gary rolls his hot dice and get double evades outrageous absolutely outrageous um, but there's an evade in response there I don't think that's too bad because nice. Although Ben's got that target lock, he doesn't really want to spend it. The difficult, no, definitely not. The difficulty is now is just knowing how manoeuvrable Eloasti is. Ben's got to try and somehow counter that because, yep, that's the exact move we th I thought it was going to be the classic three talon white because Eloasti because oh, Eloasti oh. oddly makes it. We just talked about the X-Wing not being as maneuverable as the TIE Fighter, but that kind of changes it a little bit, I have to admit. I mean, the T-70 as a chassis is really good. And you've got some yes. pilots in there which can do some crazy things. I mean, um, Gary Rand snapped last time with his boosting shenanigans. Elo with his um, talent roll shenanigans, which works perfectly with the outmaneuver as well, because generally you're going to be getting around behind but Ben has absolutely called that perfect in doing the two sloop so avoiding an outmaneuver shot and that is actually pretty good range two shot there so he can get some damage in Ooh, just I think the pattern hit. analyzer evade as Gen was, was a pretty crucial call as well I have to admit yeah using that evade for the safety net not that he needed it, it was pretty good because as we did discover you can't actually use Duke with Midnight when there's a target lock there because you cannot your opponent cannot have their dice modified and even you can't modify Indeed. them which is Indeed. again another part of the rules that we weren't actually aware of so it's quite an interesting one but another and, uh, roll it's outrageous it's so it's so good you just need to get some stress on Elo and then oh, that's it. Damn it. It's, it's gone. Damn it. But it is just so hard. 
Oh, that's unfortunate for Ben. He's going to want to try and get away. From... I don't think he can't really do anything to get away from that, unfortunately. No, he should have hard two and barrel rolled would be my would have been my opinion. It was a tough one because although you could anticipate Elo doing the the, the uh, Tanner roll, it's, it's always going to be tricky. But fortunately, nothing came of it there, so Ben managed to get away with that one. No, we're not getting a lot of damage in here at the moment. They've both got a lot of evade dice, though. And especially with yeah. Ben being... Wary isn't exactly the right word, but he's always cautious of using that target lock because he can use it, A, as a defensive modifier in that Gary can't modify his attack dice when he's got it. And also it works well as a, an attack modifier because Gary can't modify his defense dice either. So, yes, he's... No. He's, yes, he's not using it as you would expect a target lock, but if Gary gets a poor roll, there's nothing he can do about it, which is exactly what Ben wants. He, he's kind of hoping for a terrible roll on Gary's part, but mm -hmm. also to get a good roll on his part. Not quite like that, but it is another shield through. So it's very good. can get it. Yeah, it's very much a war of attrition on Ben's part. Yeah. It doesn't help that Gary literally will just do, will fly over an obstacle and just screaming whatever. Yeah, just doesn't care. Yeah. Hilarious. I mean, there's one thing you definitely can't dismiss for Gary is that he has just gone for it the entire Flight Academy. He's not scared to potentially disadvantaged himself in the hope of getting a great position and right there if Ben doesn't barrel roll to try and increase that range oh he's gone for the evade that is okay interesting it paid off this time that really did yeah but yeah if it wasn't for that target lock I mean he didn't have any mods anyway but that's an amazing position to be in so, I mean, you can't you can't say that Gary hasn't really gone for it, and I, I absolutely no, love no. it. He's playing very aggressively, um, and it's really helping with the with the uh, talent that to yeah. mean he's not always in shot, but definitely the target lock is it, Ben's target lock is really saving here. That could, that could have been a this TIE fight could have been dead a long time ago. Yeah. But that's a great position from Gary there as well. I mean, if Ben had disengaged, Gary would have the shot. But as it is, Ben has done the two sleep. Gary still has a shot. It's a range one shot as well. Is Ben going to take a mod? A fade or focus? It's a tough decision. I'd potentially go focus. I'd, just, I'd go evade, actually. Yeah, he's he's gone for the focus. He's going for aggressive. He oh, and that's now the toughest decision. He can spend. Oh goodness! Does he spend it on the attack, or does he spend it? Does he save it for defense? I hate if, if there I, were two I'd focuses there. It. If there were two focuses there, he yeah. would have definitely. Oh yeah. There we go. Spends it. Yes. And then Gary rolls two evades. Oh. Oh, so brutal. And uh oh, that don't look good. Two hits back. Not great. Both going through. No. That's half points for that, Gary there. That's frustrating. That is because that was a bit of an unlucky roll there for Ben. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if he'd have saved that focus, it could have been a bit of a different story. But yeah, and. Annoyingly, they didn't pay off there, yeah. and, it, and it potentially could have done on any other day. An aggressive talent roll there could be interesting for next round because I don't know how easy it's going to be to avoid that obstacle and still have a shot. I don't think he can. In fairness, does he just go round the obstacle? I mean, he. 
could just fly through it just to a regular hard turn if he wanted to, but... I mean, it's Gary. We, would that, he, would, he could just go would, for it. Yeah, um, but would it solve anything? That's the question. Well, he's doing it. He's, he's doing we it. We called it. I mean... He's gonna have that. He's gonna keep all of that stress. He could potentially bank damage himself two, on a crit. Was... Yeah, bank two. No damage, so keeps the nice. stress. Oh, that was close. Loopy loop. Getting that focus. Def focus is definitely I the right call. Could... Oh Ooh. goodness! He just just Ben's not oh. getting the hit that. The, the hits he needs. It's one of the big downsides with Midnight is it's only got two red dice, and those red yeah. dice are diff when you've got that target lock and you don't want to spend it. He's been rolling so many times that, where he's just like, I need to spend it, I need to spend it, but he doesn't mm -hmm. want to because he wants to. It way worse, yeah. Yeah, it's such a it's... tough decision. It's an interesting. Um decision to make that like, is midnight in total fairness is midnight a good call for a one-on-one -on -one battle or does she fly better with a swarm of ties around her i personally think she is better with support yeah but it does make her ability easier to trigger when you've only got one ship because the number of oh, yeah. the number of times i've had midnight and i've target locked a ship and then suddenly it's... I mean, it's very rare. because You it, target locked the wrong know, one. Because it's an I-6, yeah. you then move and you're like, oh, now I need to move my target lock, which means I then don't have another action. Which is normally, yeah, exactly. normally the problem I end up coming up with with Midnight. But Midnight is a fantastic ship. And yeah, I think with support, Midnight is very powerful. But just the maneuverability, yeah, though. Yeah. Oh, the, absolutely. The maneuverability is amazing. I mean, I do really like the First Order tie. Uh, just because you get the blue hard, too. That, that's oh. that's huge. There we go. There's another point of damage. Shield through. down. Not quite. Still one left, but... Oh, that focus just coming in clutch there. Hidden under that stress token. I thought that was Ben gone, then. Well, yeah, no, I was thinking, is, is that it? But no, he's he's still managing to keep it together there. Is it going to be another bump? Flying right over the top. Pinky little Fantastic. disengage. Yeah, good good move there, good move. I mean, no, I think you're absolutely right, Phil. The If you've got more things shooting and you have got the midnight lock on the ship, You've got some. You'll have multiple attacks. Yeah. And the defender can't spend spend the dice. Yeah. So when can't modify the dice. Yeah. When you add add midnight's ability to a swarm, it just becomes exponentially better. I'm not saying that midnight yeah. is a terrible choice in one v one. I mean, midnight's made it to the semi finals. Yeah. Ben has done really well here. So, and yeah, in the group stages. It was a menace. I'm not going to lie. It was a very tough matchup. But it's getting really close. Ben needs to score at least one more point of damage as soon as possible to trigger the extra time. Yeah. He, he just wants... A, a big hit right now just to get yeah. some decent damage and I I don't think oh, the healthy's lost great hit two crits that is half oh, there what brilliant. is the crit bit too high there Gary but it's a panicked pilot no more free sloops for you Ello oh my goodness that is that's, that's nerfed him and then but that you just do that yeah Oh, oh God! That there's, is. There's no way around that one. You can't get out of that one. I mean, it was a lovely dance while it lasted, but graceful, beautiful. Ben gets his big shot in, and then Gary says, "Okay, my turn." 
powerful, but well done, Ben, for making it to the semi-finals. Gary, you're moving on to the finals, mate. Very aggressive, very well flown there. Um, Fraser, thank you so much for joining us for that one. Thank you for having me. Guys, that's the semi-finals done. We have our finalist. It is Gary versus Connor. A rematch from the group stages. Both have a win against each other. So who is going to go for that 2v1 win overall? Got the third place match coming up first though. But don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next time.